is Dina Does. I'm Dina, and I know a little bit about a lot, but I want to know more. So join me on this path to self-discovery. This week on Dina Does, we are talking intro to spirituality with my dear friend, Teresa Judice. You do not need an introduction. Everyone knows who you are. Everyone loves you, T. You've got your tree huggers. <laughs> I'm wearing my glasses. I just want to say first for the people who are watching this, I'm wearing my glasses because I've got your questions here to answer and I need my glasses to read them. So you'll see the reflection of the light, but we'll deal with it. You'll also see the painters in the background that are painting my house, but that's why we love Dina does. It's casual. It's at my kitchen counter with a girlfriend talking about life and love. And today we're going into spirituality um, and Teresa, I obviously there's a million things that I could ask you about housewives and everything else, but all the other interviewers ask you that I want to talk to you about your spiritual journey, how it started, where it started, how you're going now, what you're recognizing now and everything else. So let's dive right into it. I love you. Thank you for being here. Love you more. Thank you for <laughs> having me excited for this. Um, um I, okay, so that's my first question, how it all started. Well, why don't I, I'll, because that can be an ever ending answer. Why don't I prompt you with questions? First of all, loving the Buddha in the background. This is Thank your, you. this is perfect. Is this your Zen room at home? Yes. Yes, this all is. Right. Well, I also have a Buddha in my bedroom and I have that pillow, you know, that you put your butt on it and you sit on it, like that comfy, soft pillow. A meditation pillow. pillow. Yeah. Meditation yeah. pillow. <laughs> I love well, you. <laughs> I will answer my first question. Um, okay. You got me into all this. You got me into the whole spiritual journey. It, you know, it started all from you. And then from you, um, Louis' sister, Veronica, sh she's the second one. And then that's what made me bring you and Veronica together because I, I'm like, these two got to meet. They're going to love each other. And, you know, the, the rest is history. Oh, I love that. I remember, you know, little by little introducing things to you. And I think we made a vision board together on season six. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was fun. And, you know, that's where I started to come out of like, I call it, you know, the broom closet and showing my little witchy ways for season six. And I did a manifesting thing with Lexi, but you know me, I've been like this since you met me, you know, yeah, into... no, I, I, like, I always love that about you. Remember, I kept saying, I want to understand more about it. I'm like, you know, like, I, you know, I'm like, she, like, you know, you, I used to always call you like the witch, the witch, the good witch, the good, <laughs> good witch, good, good witch. My I know I read. I, well, I'm not, we all are psychic. You just like right. tap into it in different we ways. We all have psychic powers. It's just, we have to know how to use them, right? Yes. So um, it's really fun to watch you. Cause like when we met, when we were 20 years old, we met through our dear friend, Jackie, and all of us were working at Macy's. I've told this story where I was a makeup artist. You were a buyer. Jackie was a makeup artist. And we, we you and Jackie met and hit it off. And Jackie and I have been friends since we're 15. Um, and then we started hanging out, but our friendship was very like girls night out, fun, like surface. We weren't like, you know, close to your friends. It wasn't until housewives, when I was asked to put together a group of friends, I thought you would be amazing because you were so fabulous <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, the kids. And at that point, you know, we talked about this, I think on the reunion season six, you were more like just as unbelievable mom and stage mom really like the kids were dressed to the nines at all times and Gia were at her dance competition at the time and you were like you know cheering her on it was the cutest thing so I thought when I thought the show was like super innocent I thought that would just be a really fun aspect yeah. to the show yeah. to show <laughs> like what kind of mom you are and how fabulous the kids were 24 7 even if we were just like going to grab ice cream they were decked out to the nines um and then our friendship kind of made a turn, I, I think, when I came back for season six. And that's when you were like prepping for this really difficult time in your life. And I was literally, you know, they asked me back every year, but I was asked back to be your support system for this, for that season. And of course, I'm like, okay, my family's gone. I need the money. I'm going to be there for her anyway. Might as well do it on TV. And that's when I started seeing our friendship change a little bit and get a little bit deeper. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. And now fast forward to you being with Louie and Louie and Dave getting along. Um, not that Tommy and Joe didn't get along. They knew each other and were like, hey, bro, and saw each other. But 
Dave and Louie, you know, formed a nice friendship and that enabled us to take vacations together and start spending more time together. And now I think our friendship in the last two years has really gone to a whole nother level. It has, yes. And watching you um, dive in, like you said, I kind of introduced you to it. And then um, Louie's sister has been into it and Louie's into it. Now it's like, we're kind of sharing this experience together and doing certain things together where it's just like a couple's retreat. We just had one at our Florida house where we just get together and meditate and, you know, write down our intentions and spend time talking about um, how couples can stay strong through difficult times and stuff like that. But we've also, you know, gone out of the country and done more spiritual retreats and stuff like that, that we've gone a little deeper. And I love seeing the change in you. I love it so much. Um, Not that you were ever bad. You were never, never bad. But the thing I love about you is like, you're so childlike and, you know, playful. And I'm so pensive and deep and always in deep thought and thinking about life and everything. And I want to be more like you and playful. And you keep on asking me, how can I be more like you, you know, with the spiritual side? And now we're like really sharing that. And um, you're teaching me on this journey not to be so serious all the time and to be playful and just live in the moment. And, you know, we're showing you how you can go a little deeper. So let's talk about it. Crazy, like, remember the card, that deck that you made us pick cards from? Mm-hmm. It was the deck yeah. cards. It, I, I, I just have, I made them up. It's like a little deck. When, before we started like our prayer circle, we each picked um, a little card that was like representation or what the universe wanted to say that represented us. And yours was? Play. Play. Yeah. And mine was creativity. <laughs> which are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I show a lot of my spirituality through creativity. Like when we put together this retreat, it's like I got us all gift bags with books on how to have a health, healthy relationship and love crystals. And we did a little, um, I have my love kit that I sell for single people. What we did a, a marriage kit where we put down on a, a list what we want for us as a couple um, to come together, like what we want for, uh, you know, you and Louie together and Dave and I together and the other couples that were there. And we kind of just did, some will call it a spell, but I, you know, we reference it as a prayer um, to just manifest what we want as a couple. Um, so creativity yeah, is I perfect. Love yeah, yeah. I, I love that you did that. That was So anyone, the love kit that Dina sells definitely works. I would definitely <laughs> get it. If you want to find love, you will find love. <laughs> Well, that's why I, I, that's how I got Dave. So, but we were talking about the, the other thing that, you know, cause we shared a lot in, in that retreat. The one thing that the reason why you have found Louie is because, and you said this, how you felt about Dave and I, so share how, what you felt like when I found Dave and everything. Yes. Um, well, when you found Dave, I was so happy for you. And I feel like when you're happy for someone, happiness comes to you. So I really, I was like, oh my God, like I would, there was no jealousy, not like, oh my God, why she, you know, how some, I, I know women out there probably think like that, like why she find him and not me and mm-hmm. that. And it's like, no, I was so happy for you. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy for her. I'm like, and, you know, and that's why, like, not even like, I mean, I, at the time I wasn't even thinking like, you know, I want to find someone like that, but then. I guess subconsciously, of course, everyone wants to find an amazing person to, you know, to, to, to be with. And so, and then of course I kept saying that, I'm like, I want to find, after I got to know Dave more, I was like, I want to find someone just like Dave, the way Dave t- treats Dina. And, and then I did. And then voila, we, we, we introduced them and they're like best friends. They're like, they well, talk more than we talk, right? You I know, know they, they really do. But that's, what's great about you is like, the people don't get to see that side of you because the housewives portrays like the negative aspects and we all have negative aspects and we all have things that we need to work on. But that's the thing about you. That's so pure and so spiritual to not be envious of something because the universe, like there's enough for everyone. So when you see someone who has something that you don't have just yet, when you're happy for them, that you're working on that vibration so that more of that will come to you when you're envious that's a low vibration and then you'll never get that shit or you'll get it with 
really bad repercussions to attached to it. So the fact that you were like, here's my friend who I love, who found a man who loves her so much, you were so happy the universe met you with a man who treats you the same. So that in itself is spiritual. You don't even have to like start a spiritual journey to do that. That's innately in your soul. And that's what I see and what I love. Because I do get questioned a lot um, about people who are like, how can you be friends with someone who's on this show or who does these kind of things? But like I said, we all have negative traits and the producers and the show want to focus on those because otherwise there wouldn't be the salacious things that happen that cause the ratings. So now that you're- I, I, want, I want to add one thing, Dean. Like it's between, like that's where I feel like where it started. I feel like you and like with Dave, and with my parents, because remember I had told you how, what I really did. I really prayed to my parents on Bay Boulevard. And then that's where I met Louie a few weeks after that, after praying to my parents. It's like crazy. It's like, you know, being happy for you. Really, that's like where it all started. Like just, you know, because I feel like you should be happy for your friends. Not like, like I feel like, yeah, like what, what anything, friends, family, you should be happy for them. Because then happiness comes to you and in any like not even in love, like in life, right? Life, anything that happens in your life, like happiness will come to you. But like if you lead with like hatred or or anything, being like, yeah, like being mean or mean spirited, then I feel like that comes to you also, right? In exactly. a different way. So yeah, so I would say the help between you and my parents brought me Louie. <laughs> yeah, and that's the law of attraction and that's manifesting 101, you know? Um, people get upset. Sometimes they think they're like, oh, well, you're a witch and you have mother Mary. Like, what are you? It's anti. And I'm like, it's prayer. Manifesting is prayer with pure intentions. And that's what you're doing to your parents that day on Bay Boulevard. You were pure and loving and talking to your angels about what you wanted to bring into your life. And there you go. Yeah. So I never believed it until I actually, you know, did it. And then, and then I was like, wow, that really does work, you know? So that's why I tell everyone, I, you know, I spread the word about that. I'm like, if you lost someone and I'm like, just pray to them, they'll help you, you know? I, I yeah, say that to sometimes you can communicate better with them on the other side. Like my dad, you know, our dads were so similar. They were tough guys. I mean, your, yours was a lot softer and loving, um, but they were strict and they had tempers and, um, it was very difficult sometimes for me to talk to my dad on this earth, but now we communicate so beautifully and he answers my prayers like immediately. Um, so yes, definitely pray to your loved ones because they're here with us and they're listening and, um, working even harder on the other side for us. It's I agree. Beautiful. Um, so let's backtrack for when you went away for a little bit, um, and you started your yoga journey there. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that yoga experience um, brought more peace into your life or allowed you some tools to tap into that? Or do you feel like it was more for fitness? <laughs> like now, um, definitely spiritual because um, I have to say like you, being, I was at Danbury and mm -hmm. it was a shithole. Can I say shit? Yeah, place, <laughs> you could say whatever the fuck you want in here. The place is gross, but I have to say the view was so beautiful outside. We were on the top of a mountain and I saw all four seasons. I was there all four seasons. Oh, I went wow. in and out in December. And I, I'm telling you, Dean, that's what saved me is going outside and looking at the view and meditating and seeing how beautiful it was. Um, <sighs> like, I was like, really God? I'm like, I never went away to college. Like, this is where you had to send me to, cause I felt like I was away at college but like, you know, an all girls college, you know, and we had to wear like all the same clothes. It was like, you know, like one of those <laughs> colleges. I was like, and then I would really talk to God outside. I'd be like, okay, but at least you gave me a beautiful view because that's what got me through every day is it like going outside, meditating and like seeing how beautiful the view were, was. And like, I would just sit there, like, you know, there was it, there was so much property and land. Like sometimes I'd sit on the grass. Sometimes I would sit on the, you know, like on a stone wall, you know, like that, like wherever I felt comfortable, you know, sometimes it was like in the snow, I didn't even care. But like I said, I was there all four seasons and that's what got me through it and, and doing the yoga 
got me through it. And that's when, it, that's where I started meditating. Um, what's the, um, it was a couple that I used to, um, do the, his tape every day. Um, the one from the Hamptons, Colleen and yes. Wait, is yeah. her Asian. Yes. They're in the Hampton. Yeah. They're in Sag Harbor. Yes. Them too. Sean, mm-hmm. her, her name is, is it Sean? Or I think C- it's Colleen. Is it? Maybe, you, no, you're right. Maybe it is Colleen. And I forgot. Yeah. Like I used to it starts with a Y. I, I, I can't think of the name right now, yeah. but they're, they're amazing in the real deal. Yeah. I used to do their tape every day and I used to do Bob Harper's tape. Amazing. And, and um, yeah, the, those two, I would do a lot of th- their yoga tapes. Yeah. Cause they had, so, tapes. that's what I would do. What you were doing that you didn't even realize it because we're all witches is you were using the elements of nature to ground yourself sitting on the earth, sitting in the snow. Um, you know, there's nothing more healing than nature. Whenever I'm overwhelmed, I go outside, I take a walk and animals, nature and animals, as you know, now you've got a house full. Yeah. Um, but, but that's what, for you to recognize that, that nature is medicine and to be outside there, that's spirituality. That is working with the universe. That's working with the seasons and the moon cycles and everything, all the crazy things that I talk about that everyone thinks like I'm this crazy witch. That's, that's what it is. It's like what people have been doing for generations and eons and eons and eons before there was all this building and stuff like they work with the elements of earth. So during that time to like recognize that is amazing. And to recognize that it got you through, that's what it was. It was spirituality. It was the basis of what we're talking about today. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's really, I mean, I walked in like um, a badass bitch. Like I was like, no, because <laughs> Like if they try to, it's going to be the last thing they ever do. You know, <laughs> like I walked in, like, really, like, like Jim, my attorney dropped me off. He's like, you did not even shed a tear. I'm like, because I'm like, I, you know, in my heart, like I, I'm like, this is so wrong that I'm here, but I'm like, there, there's a reason why I'm here. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to take it. You know? So I'm like, there's a, this, you know, I guess this is part of my journey. There's a reason why I have to be here. And I really accepted it. And I'm like, I know God, you know, God ha- got me. I'm like, I know he has me in his hand. And like, he's not going to let anything happen to me. And in my heart, I guess, because, you know, I mean, you know, Dean, I, I signed papers that Joe told me to sign. I wasn't, like, I didn't, I, I wasn't, there was no criminal intent at all that I ever did. And I, now, like, look, I did my time so I could say the truth. Yeah. And so, anything but I was like I don't know why I have to go through this but there's a reason why and I'm, I'm like okay so I knew my kids were good with my parents that's what kept me like sane too because like being away from my four daughters that like you know like broke my heart like I was like of course. Really, I was never away from them and and what I kept thinking is like I didn't grow up with great grandparents so I'm glad my kids get this sacred time with my parents so they'll never forget them and which they don't. I mean, they they talk about my parents all the time. They miss them so much. So that was the only, that's what kept me sane is that my parents were with my kids every day. And I'm like, all right, God, you're, you're giving me a break. So this is what you're doing. You you wanted me to have a break. I get it. You know? And like, you want me to get into the spiritual journey because that's how I got into yoga. And then I came out and I was like, oh my God, I got to get certified. I'm like, I love it so much. And, um, and that's the thing, like you moved away so yeah, I didn't have like a lot, like a, like a lot of, you know, cause I wanted to keep doing it. And it was like, I didn't have that many people around me that wanted to, I was doing it on my own. Then, then I got certified and then my mom got sick and then I went through that. And then, you know, my dad moved me. Yeah. You weren't living with me. I mean, you weren't here. You were at, wait, I, sorry. I got a phone call. I hit, I hit sent to, to call, sent to voicemail. So you weren't here. So I was just like pretty much doing it on my own. And then after that, you know, my dad got sick. So, and then that's when I met Louie, you know, and then. You so picked then, up where now, you left now, off. Yeah. And now I'm glad that like, you know, you know, we see each other so much. I feel like I see you more than I see some of my you know close friends around here. So, which I love because, you know, our guys love each other and, you know, with Louie's sister. So it's like, we're all in this spiritual journey together, which I love you know, and I'm like learning so much more. And after what happened this season, like, I'm like, I, I need you, you guys, I need your help, you know, because it's not like who I am and you know, it's not who I am, but it's like, 
we, I guess we all have that streak in us that, I mean, I, and you could explain it better. It's like, you know, when, when you're pushed, like you keep getting poked and poked and poked and poked and poked, finally, you know, you know, like anyone else. I mean, I think I'm not the only person that is going to explode, you know? Yeah. So that comes to, I'll start asking the questions that comes to um, our first question that came in from our Instagram is, are you happy with the way you were portrayed this season? Um, uh, I don't think so. No, no. Yeah. Obviously not because I'm trying to like, no, I'm not because it's like, you know, Margaret, how she always claims she's so smart, you know, and if she's, you know, she, exactly, she, you know, she, if you, you know, she knows, she knew exactly what she was doing. Like she knew that, you know, she sees how happy I am. It's like, stop poking me, stop saying the same. And like, it's, she's coming across like she's so concerned, you know, and like, okay, if you're so concerned, then tell me in a nice way or, you know, I know you can't, you know, whatever. If she, she was a real friend, she would call me off camera and say, Teresa, get it, like, to exp like explain it. Like she would have explained it to me, like in a way to make me understand if she was my real friend. Like, you yeah. know, let me explain it. Okay, I get it. It's out on the internet because these trolls are putting it out on the internet. I get it. But Margaret's the one that brought it to light on Housewives of New Jersey. If it wasn't yeah. for Mark, it gets, who cares? So much stuff is out on the internet. So much stuff is out there, but you have to have somebody that brings it to light. And when you, when you have one of your close friends that claims to be your friend and look, is looking out for you and is concerned for you, like you were concerned for me, you know, you, like, you know me, like you know, like I'm a big girl, I can handle myself. And like, you did not even ask me one thing. And you're like, what? you're my best friend and you didn't even ask me. You, like my, Rosanna, from, like my other best friend from California, she didn't even ask me. Like you guys so, know. So people do ask me that is like, why aren't you, you know, doing certain things? First of all, I don't watch the show. I really don't. And it's nothing against anybody. You know me, I don't watch TV. Like it's I, just. No, and I have to say like, that's why I was like, skeptical about like answering it. Cause I didn't watch it all. <laughs> like oh, I didn't gosh. watch every single episode. But like hearing from, I watched some of it, you know, cause like I do have a busy life. Like, you know, I, I pick up Adriana. She's at, she's, you know, she does dance competitions. She does dance every single day. So sometimes I'm running out to go get her. I know they send us the clip. If that week, you know, sometimes I watch it, sometimes I, I don't, but like, I know, I, I feel like I wasn't portrayed. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, everyone says you're so mean. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not mean. Like, you know? Well, like what they don't understand is like, first of all, Margaret, I don't know her from Adam. I actually really like her mom from what I saw on like Watch What Happens Live a few times. I think she's hysterical, um, but I don't know her personally. And I even said to you, you know, because you were sharing with me, like she keeps on like, I'm like, but what, what's she like? Like, I almost wanted to talk to her and say like, what's going on? But then I remember being back on the show that it's sometimes, and they'll probably hate me that I'm interviewing saying this, sometimes it's the producers, like they have like a whole team that's like looking online for whatever they can find or like getting in touch with certain exes or whatever. And then they're like, hey, guess what? I've got this juice. You wanna be the one to bring it out? Like you'll be the star this season if you do, you know? So that's what you like, what people don't know. So Margaret would be like, fuck yeah, I'll take it, you know, and, and then run with it and then get more involved with her. But there are unfortunately some people that, that enjoy, you know, being the head, you know, we, we joke and say, everyone jokes says it's Teresa show, but it fucking is like, it's always your storyline, everybody reacting to it. Um, so perhaps Margaret is just like loving her job and wants to stay relevant um, have you ever looked at it from that perspective other, other than taking it personally from her? Um, well, I took it personally last year. I mean, the last season, because um, like, I didn't like, this is like Louie's first time coming on TV. And I was like, oh my God, these vultures are coming after my boyfriend. And I felt so bad. I was like, oh my God, imagine like he would have been like, you know what, fuck this shit, fuck Teresa. Like, you know, I heard that from the New York housewives. They're like, don't bring them on the show. They're like, I oh told God, you not to bring them on. <laughs> I know. My brother told him not to come on. My brother told him not to come. My brother's like, don't come on. So, and like, I didn't, I, obviously it's like, how am I supposed to hide him? Like, yeah. you know, I didn't want to 
him. Like I didn't, how am I going to do that? So, you know, and then here, poor guy, he's coming into my world. And then, all, and then this is like, he's getting attacked. And it's like, I felt so bad. I felt so guilty. Cause imagine if I went into his world and his people attacked me, I sh I'm sure he would feel like shit too. You know? So that's how I was feeling. I was feeling like shit. I was trying to protect him. I have nothing to hide. That's the thing. When I didn't want him to speak, there was this one part that, um, cause I didn't like the way Margaret said it. Like he has to answer it or he has to clear his name. Like who the fuck are you? Excuse my French that he has to, like, he doesn't have to answer to you. Like, I didn't like how she said it. Like how she, yeah. her demeanor was like very like, who the fuck are you? Like, I don't even know who you are. Like, you're not even one of my best friends. You're not even one of my dear friends. Like, look at the way you're acting. Like a real friend would not be doing what you're doing to me. Like you see that I'm so happy and you're trying to like hurt our, you know, hurt us, like hurt our love bubble. And I got the love bubble from Veronica, from Louie's sister. Cause she said when, you know, her and her husband got together there was people trying to hurt their love bubble. She's like, you need to protect your love bubble. No, and absolutely. I, I'm a believer in that too. Dave, you know, people, I think even when I was on Housewives with you, you, some of the girls would get mad at me because I would be very secretive about some things that I was working on or doing. And it wasn't because I didn't want to share. It was just because I, I'm very protective of things that are sacred and important to me. And I would put exactly like a bubble of protection around it. And then somebody would be like, well, why the fuck didn't you tell us you got that opportunity? I'm like, because it's not done yet. And I'm just like, I'm so protective. And that's how you felt about your relationship with Louie because it was so sacred and new. But yes, you are on a reality show that you signed on for to share your life. And I know how difficult it was to be on when Tommy didn't want to participate at all. Um, and it hurt my feelings a little that he didn't you know, want to support me in that, but I had to do what I had to do. And I even remember when I quit for a season and they were like, why don't you come back as like a friend, but you have to come back with your husband. I was like, no, like, so I get where it's very difficult to be the star of the show, which you are and not share your full life and everything that's involved in it. So, so I, I, Wait, D, let me just finish that thought. So when she said to me, like, he has to answer that. And it's like, I did it. He wanted to answer it. I didn't like how she went about it. Like if of she was like in a sweet, humble way, like, like really like say it like in a nice way. Like, listen, if you say this, it just like, like, just in a, like the way it's supposed to be said or say, it, tell me off camera, tell me, it's like Teresa, like if he explains it, then it's going to shut it down. Cause that's what she kept saying to me, but she didn't say it that way. The way I, at my pool party, you need to explain it. No, don't tell, like, who are you? Like, I just didn't like how she went about it. And then at the Jersey shore, I just didn't like, like how, she, like her, like the, just her whole attitude about it, the way, like how she, how she was talking behind my back and everything. So that's why I didn't want Louie to answer. I wasn't trying to hide anything. And no, even, my, that. even my kids are like, Ma, you look like very defensive. Like you should have just made Louie speak because you know, he would like clear it up in a second. But my thing is like, fuck that. Like, like she, I, I just, I'm like, who, you don't owe her an explanation. You know, meaning Margaret. He he didn't owe Margaret an explanation. So that's why I was trying to stop him from speaking. But then eventually, I was like, you know, then I was, I, I just because he kept asking me three times, and then I'm like, three strikes, then you're out. So I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Then the third time, I was like, all right, you could let him. And then I let him talk, and I was like, and then well, after the, that, the one thing about Louis is he's a very eloquent speaker. Like he he really can speak well. So you probably should let him talk more because obviously <laughs> I, love, wait, I love the way he speaks. I love how he puts people in their places. Yeah. Like it, with kindness, it, with well, kindness. kindness. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. He's so kind. Like, like he kissed. Oh, I can't even, can't, we can't let it go. We, I don't know when, when is this airing? Um, probably when the reunion comes out the same day. Okay. Um, he's like the MVP of the reunion. He's mm -hmm. absolutely, like amazing you know yeah. like wait, i would be the mvp but he's, <laughs> yeah he is the mvp he's like amazing and i keep learning things from him every day so yeah he's pretty that's why from now on i'm gonna make him speak i was just trying to protect him that's what i want to tell all the viewers all the fans like i have nothing to hide I, like i just was trying to protect him from the vultures out there yes and, of um, course that's what i was trying to do like and I never knew, like, look, you were the, I, ta I, I flipped the table because of you. Like people that I love that are so dear and close to you, 
it's like my, you know, like I would do it for family, like family, like, you know, anybody so close to me. So you know, I want to, I want to ask, I love that about you. You are, you're very, you know, defense on the same way. Like certain people, I I've never met Jackie from the housewives, but I don't like her because of, she doesn't like you and what she went and Margaret too. Like I've never met them, but I don't need to meet them because they were bad to my friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm very much like that. I get that mentality, but I want to go because we're talking about our spiritual growth, your spiritual growth here. And now you do have Louie as a partner, which is amazing because Dave and I growing together, you know, on different ways, he's showing me ways I can grow. I'm certainly tapping and waking him up because this is spiritual is brand new to him, but he's just, he's growing leaps and bounds. I'm so proud of him. And we're growing as a couple together, but so we talked about our dads and their anger. And we touched a little bit in our retreat about deep seated anger that we all carry in different ways. And I kind of pushed down my anger, especially with men, all the, you know, my dad, when he would flip out, I would get more scared and I'd be like, okay, daddy, calm down. Like, let me get you a club soda, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and like, we talked about our shared childhood of growing up, watching our dads with an, an anger issues. So obviously, you know, we've got both, both got a little bit of that in different ways. I suppress it, but yours comes out like a wild woman at times. So are you going to try to work on that? And how do you feel that will work being on the series? Like, because they know Teresa to, you know, start screaming and say, that's none of your fucking business to say there or throw glasses or whatever. How is it something you want to work on, first of all? And secondly, do you think it will work moving forward? forward in housewives um I think it will because listen I'm not proud of myself like I, I really like after that day um I was like shut I was so mad at myself and from now on I'm not drinking I never, <laughs> I'm not gonna blame it on the alcohol I'm, I'm, I'm taking full responsibility that I did it but um I did drink a lot of tequila and um I you know obviously you know like when you're when you're on when you're drinking alcohol like you are a little different you know so well, let me tell you something about the spiritual side of alcohol that people don't like to hear but it's called spirits for a reason because they used to use it in ceremony to bring out bring up wake up spirits wow so oh when God. you drink alcohol especially if you're like to the point of pass out you don't remember things you're actually calling in other entities that aren't your own because the, like you're allowing the spiritual energy of yourself to be wide open. So that's, I mean, one of the reasons why I don't drink first reasons because I was scared shit of my dad. So I never started drinking in the first place, but it does alter your soul. And then I want to add another thing because they didn't, I'm sorry, this isn't, they didn't edit it this way. She didn't, I didn't throw everything at her when she called me a liar. You know what kept playing in my head? She said to me that we wanted Louie to win. Now, I didn't even watch the last episode. I didn't watch the episode with the flipping because I, I'm not proud of it. You know, with, with like, um, not the flipping, with throwing everything on her. I didn't watch that episode because I, ju I just couldn't watch it. That's that, you know, so I didn't watch that one. But what kept playing in my head that she, she said that, what she said to me that made me do that, she said, we wanted Louie to win. We wanted him to win. I'm like, we wanted him to, it's like that. So that kept, you know, you know how it is with me. Yeah, for one sure. Just ticks me off. Like it could be the smallest thing or it could be, you know, just like one word could just t set me off. That word set me off. Like we wanted him to win. I was like, what? He is winning. And that's when I threw everything on her. All right. I, well, I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> yeah, because like, that's because she called me a liar. It's like, please, who are like, really, Margaret, I'm a liar. Then what the fuck are you? You know, it's like, please, like. Um, so I, I, this is a perfect example to ask you. So now we did this exercise in our retreat where we put a mint under our tongue. Do you remember that? And it was, you couldn't speak until the mint dissolved. Right. So we were saying how, like, when you get agitated at something, just pretend you have that mint. So it gives you that 10 seconds or whatever to your nerves to regulate and for you to like rationally think about your response. Okay. Is, sorry, so your question, what I've been doing. So, okay. so Veronica has, you know, she started her own company for Givity. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I started, I already started speaking to her. Like, you know, we started at that, you know, I'm going to have her on the podcast in a couple of weeks. Oh, awesome. So you, yeah. you know, explain the whole Forgivity. 
um, you know, app that she has and the business that she started. So, you know what, you know how, it, you know how it's so hard for me to forgive. Right. And it's so hard for me to say, sorry, like sorry. And forgiving people is like, I'm going to admit it. It's so hard for me to do. Mm -hmm. And um, since I've met Louie, he, he's helped me with that. He's like, you need to forgive. He's like, if it makes you feel better, then you need to do it to move on. So like, after I did that in Nashville to Margaret, after I threw everything, like, you know, I, everything on her, um, he's like, will it make you feel better if you say sorry? Will it make you feel better? I was like, you know what, babe, you're right. Because at first I didn't, it was like, there's no way I'm apologizing. Like, I'm like, fuck her, you know, I'm like, I'm not, a, you know, you know how I get. And then he's like, but is it going to make you feel better? And I'm like, I'm so mad at myself. I'm so mad. I got, I haven't got, I, I never get like that. Um, but I'm like, babe, it's, you know, cause I was trying to protect him, you know? And I was just, I was just like getting poked all season long. Like it was so aggravating. And then there was stuff going on behind the scenes that people did, you know, that the fans and the world doesn't know. And I was just, it was just really hurtful and just everything. It was, it was so bad anyway. Um, so then he said, will it make you feel better if you say sorry? And I said, yes. I, I well, said, yeah. That's so the that, thing about forgiveness is you don't need, you can say you're sorry. It doesn't mean that you, you need to be a part of their lives or be their friend or whatever. It relieves. That's what Veronica told me. Yeah. She's yeah. like, just because you see, you know, you, you could forgive someone doesn't mean you have to let them back in your space. Yes. You know, you know, it, you could forgive them, you know, and then maybe you could, it's, you know, see, see how it goes. But she's like, forgiveness is something you know, that you do for yourself and you make sure exactly. you feel better. So I've been working with Veronica and then also I've been working with a life coach, um, Cecily. Oh, I love Cecily. You've got to have Cecily on your podcast. She's the most amazing person it's in her husband as well. And they're the essence of pure love and goodness in this world. Yeah. And they actually just got back from Ukraine from helping mm -hmm. you know, the people there. So um, matter of fact, um, I have a call. I, 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 call, I talked to her yesterday. My next call is going to be with her, I think tomorrow. Oh, so he's, he's helping me. So I have Veronica and Cecily, you know, Veronica with Forgivity and Cecily life coach. And then you, I have you also, cause you, you like, you're like so sweet and pure too. Like, I'm like, it, you, I don't, you, you don't get like me. I like you, you stay calm. I'm the one that gets crazy. And like, and I think I get that because yeah, you, you, you close down from like, from our fathers. And I, I realized that I'm just like my dad, you know, how my dad reacted when he was younger. And then as the years went on, my dad mellowed out. And so, this is what I realized. Everyone, in order to get to a good place, and even Louis, Louis said this to my to me. He goes, this, he said this to me yesterday. He's like, you know, he's like, Teresa, you're doing the work, but like other people have to do the work also. Like, you That's know, like exactly what I said on our podcast yesterday. Yeah, he's like, it's not it's a two sided street, right? Like, so, so if you're not speaking to your family member, if you're only doing the work and the other side's not doing the work, it's never going to get better. Yeah. So like, and even in a relationship, see, like if like me and Louie, like we both communicate, we both like want to make things better. You know, I'm just saying, thank, I said to him, I said to him, we're still in our love bubble. Like it's the beginning, you know, but like, he's like, but he, somebody told him, oh, I think Gary and Dave um, said to him or Dave, even, you know, your husband said, it's so lucky that you guys, that me and Louie started this in the beginning of a relationship that we could keep, you know, like following Building on it. Yeah. Keep working on it. Exactly. Yeah. Cause some people, you know, they, they started on, I mean, but whatever, I think it's never too late to start, you know? No, so I think no, but you're right. I mean, the question was asked the other day on my podcast is how I deal with, you know, toxic family members. And I'm like, listen, I'm working on me every day and cleaning up what I have to clean up. But if people are not doing out in the other end, you can't meet in the middle. Like it can't be just one-sided. That's what every relationship. So as you're on the spiritual journey, you know, for Bravo, it would, it's going to fucking suck if, if Margaret and everyone goes on their spiritual journey too, because then they're going to left with a bunch of Zen people. People say, you know, well, do you want to bring Dina back? And there's a bunch of people, of course, who are so sweet, like, yes, yes. And the other one, like, she's like watching paint dry. She's so boring. Like I'm, I am boring because I don't react. I'm not reactive. 
you know, most of the time, like you, when I get pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, yes, then I boil over. But the the um, well, I've, the I've exercise really seen that side of you. So. You haven't. <laughs> it, 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 you know? like I'm glad. So I must be doing something right, you know. And I mean, and you've seen it with me, but not towards you, towards mm -hmm. someone else, like trying to hurt you. You know, like that's the only that's the only way you've seen it. You know, like yeah, and it, uh, it, yeah, I'm not confrontational. There, right. the, there's, there was a time, I think we mentioned this, where I was like upset with you, but I didn't mention it. And it was probably the best thing for a relationship because I just let it blow over. And it wasn't anything you did specifically. It was just like a time where you and Jacqueline were really close. And I was hurt that I introduced you guys and Jacqueline and I were fighting and you guys became so close and then you were working together. So I understood why your relationship had to be closer, but I just let it blow over. And eventually you guys broke up yeah <laughs> so then we were able to reconnect you know um but had I confronted you you know we probably would have poked at each other's wounds and had a big blowout but I guess for me like now I'm trying to be more vocal in a healthy way if something's bothering me because it's not good to put it all deep down inside either oh, and I wish you would have told me because I'm very into loyal loyalty you know and mm -hmm. you you probably would have opened up my eyes to a lot of things that you know I you know I wish you would have told me because you know what yeah. friends friends should tell each other like that's that's another thing that Margaret was saying on the show like you know fr or and all these other wannabes trying to be like a housewife you know on the show like that just met that was on there for two seconds I'm not even gonna say their name because that's what they want anyway it's like <laughs> it's like yeah it's like um my point is it's like yeah, of course, if you're my friend, I want you to tell me. I want you to be open with me. I want you to tell me anything that's on your mind. I do. Like, I don't want you to keep it inside because that's what friends do. So from now on, anything that ever, ever, ever bothers you, please tell me because then you could shed the light and make me see something that I'm not seeing, you know, or- No, no, but you know, it's good I, now that I'd feel more comfortable doing that now because we're both working on ourselves so we can have a calm- you know, conversation about it instead of us being reactive. You know, that's, I guess, what because my dad was so reactive, what I've always been scared with. And a lot of people in my life are like, why doesn't she talk to me anymore? And I have to be better at that. I'm working on it to like be more communicative and express my feelings and not be afraid of the confrontation that may come from it or the hard questions that may come from it. So it's all growing. And yes, from now on, I promise you, if you do anything to upset me, we'll talk about it. And I know that it will go in a healthy direction because we're both doing the work. I like that. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Cause I, I remember that time I was like upset and then I, I was like, I guess she just needs her time, you know? And then that's what happened. And then you finally came back to me. You know? so, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad we did. And I'm glad I was able to have this talk today. I know we're running out of time, but I want to ask you like two more quick questions. Yeah. And then I, I know you have to go get Adriana. Um, and I would love to do this from time to time to like check in because we will continue our spiritual path together. Yeah, I would um, love this. And then ask the fans if they want to keep doing this because I would love yeah. to. Yeah. And we could, we could kind of monitor where you are and how you're growing and what's new. And I, I bought you a really special birthday gift. I know we're going on a special trip um, that kind of represents um, who you are blossoming into now. So I can't wait to give it to you and explain the whole thing. And once I do, we'll post about it. Yeah. No, um, I need, I, I want to keep doing this. So you keep me in check. I'm serious. Like I want to, okay. you know, exactly. I need you. Um, I need, you know, Cecily, my life coach. I need Veronica with Forgivity. So I need my BFF. I need all three of you. Look, three. There goes three again. Yeah. Three, three. I need all three of you in my life to keep me on track. So I like that. Oh, okay. So I'm going to ask this one last question. Other than your beautiful children and Louie, what is the one thing that makes Teresa happiest? Uh, okay. What well, makes... Um, you know, I'm just grateful for life. Like you, you know, like, you know, somebody told me to like, I forgot, like, I think it even like Louie's dad, I have to say, it's like, you have to make sure you thank God every day for everything you have and that, you know, and, and, and say how grateful you are. And I have to say, I, I do wake up every morning and say, thank you, God. I'm grateful for my life. I'm great. You know, I'm grateful for healthy children, like everything that's, you know, that I have, I'm like, I'm grateful for it. So that's what just being, you know, living life, be, you know, I'm grateful for everything, you know, that I have and, you know, like healthy children. I met, 
Louie, he's amazing. I know besides them, but just like grateful for life, you know, like, and I love being, that. you know, being able to, um, and that's the thing, like, I want to do good in life because I want to spread the love and I want to like, listen, none of us are perfect. And like, you know, I, whatever I'm learning, I want to try to spread the, spread it out there. So if someone else is, is, is just like me out there, which I'm sure they are, they could, you, they could change. And I wanted to show them that, you know, you could change and evolve and become a better person and grow. You, you don't have to be stuck in your, in your habits. So that's I what love I'm that. See, this is when people ask me like, how could you be friends? This is the Teresa I know. This is the conversations we have. And this is why I love you. And this is why our friendship will last the test of time because it's the exchange of positive, good energy. And we are holding each other accountable for our actions, but in a loving way that promotes growth instead of hurt. Yeah. And that's what somebody else said, I think on the show, like, oh, so if you're friends with Teresa, you can't say, you can't give her anything. You can't say anything or whatever, any, um, I don't know if they said anything negative or you can't say, you can't disagree yeah, with people her. say that to me all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you know, you have to always agree with Teresa. You can't just, no, that's not true. No, exactly. No. Like we have discussions. Like we were doing in Florida, we had a lot of deep discussions that, you know, we both went back and forth on things, which I love that. And that's what, you know, cause sometimes you'll make me see things in, in a way that I, that I'm not seeing it. And then I'm like, Oh my God, you know what? She's right. So it's like, you know, I'm not closed minded. Of course, I want to hear for, you know, if, uh, you know, I, I want to hear from my friends. I want to hear, you know, if, if I am doing something wrong, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect, you know, and, we, and I never knew that word grow was a good thing. Like, believe it or not, you know, growing up with Guinea parents, like I, <laughs> I, never, I remember Kathy one time said to me, my cousin, she was like, wow, you're growing. And I took that as an insult. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what do you mean I'm growing? Like, I didn't understand it back then. Because, like, you know why? Because it was the whole family thing. And it's just being attacked, sure. attacked, attacked. And, and I was just always in defense mode because I was just so hurt with the whole family thing. You, you know, you know. Oh, I, I get you know. that more than, uh, more than you, you know. know. So then when she said to me, I'm growing, now I get it. And, and yeah, I grow every single day, Kathy. So, do. yeah, I grow every <laughs> single day. I do. I grow every single day and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It and I'm is. grateful and I'm going to keep growing. Like, and that's the thing you it's like, that's why, like, you know, it is going to be a big birthday coming up, but I'm not saying don't do not say my age, but I feel like Bitch, we're the same age. I know. <laughs> we're not that age. We're like 35. Yes. So like, we're <laughs> going to keep um, growing. And like, that's the thing you it's, you know, you learn every single day, something new, and that's what you life's do. all about. Right. And, you know, exactly. we're just gonna keep evolving and making things it. better. You know, I love you, T. I, we, I can't wait. We're going to put it on a schedule. Maybe every four, six weeks, we're going to do this and hold each other accountable for our growth and learn from each other. And I'm love so that. proud of you. I'm so okay, proud of you. Thank you. I'm going to keep, you know, I'm gonna, you got to keep me on track. I'm going to I'm gonna keep you on track. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Love <laughs> All right. You. I love, love you love, so love. much. Give Audrey a hug you. for me. Okay. All right. I will. Bye, Eddie. Bye.